Hi, I am Tanvir Anamoka sir, Director of Ecora Edu Solutions, a premier institute for IIT coaching. I have done B.Tech from IIT Bombay and MS from University of Wisconsin Medicine, USA. Here I am to discuss the strategic planning to get 30% marks in JE Advanced 2016. Normally, an official cutoff is 35% overall for IIT. But if a student scores high in chemistry or physics, then he needs to score at least 30% marks in maths. A student having potential to get more than 30% marks many a times lend up with just 5 to 10% marks. But why? Why does it happen? Okay, well, I'm here to tell you how to perform up to your potential. In total, there were 62 marks, 18 questions, and to get 30% marks, one need to answer six, six questions correctly. Just six questions. Now, considering the unfavorable conditions, you may make one mistake. So, just target seven questions where you make one mistake, still you get six correct questions. Now, the question is, which seven questions you need to attempt? There is a strategic planning to select the seven questions which you need to answer so that you get at least 30% marks in an Let's see some don'ts. Don't attempt section 2 multiple correct questions in the beginning because they carry minus 2 marks for wrong answer. And also each question is equivalent to 4 questions because all the 4 options need to be validated for full marks and each option evaluation was as lengthy as a separate question. Now, we'll see the criteria to select the questions. First criteria, start with the questions that has no negative marking. That will help you to start getting the marks in the beginning without any negative marks. Here we have integer type questions in the last section that has no negative marks. So we should start with integer type questions. And the second criteria is that you know your strengths. Look into yourself and find out which topics you have command over. Normally, the following topics are highly scoring like vectors, complex numbers, circles, conic sections, 3D, matrices and determinants, limits, continuity and differentiability, However, the following topics are normally not scoring like permutation and combination and probability because these questions involve a number of cases to be evaluated and you might miss some of the cases or you might make mistake in the calculations and you may end up in a wrong answer. But the Bayes theorem in probability is highly scoring because it involves direct application of the formula. Let's start achieving our target of 30% marks. We have 1 hour and total 7 questions to be attempted. So we have a target of 7 questions in 1 hour. So approximately 9 minutes for each question. So don't panic. Be confident. You have enough time. So do all the calculations carefully and confidently. You have no room for silly mistakes. Not this is very important. Don't make a single silly mistake. Start with integer type questions that has no negative marking. Skip the questions that are not of your bin. There are five questions in this section. Complex number, binomial theorem, functions and integration, determinants and limits. So start your journey with the limits question because it involves no major numerical calculations. This was the question. Limit x tends to 0, x square sin beta x upon alpha x minus sin x equal to 1. So here we see that in the numerator we have three zeros. So in the denominator we need to have three zeros. 
so that we have a finite limit of 1. So, sin of beta x can be approximated as beta x, so that in the numerator we have x cube. So, in the denominator we need to have x cube, so we apply the series of sin x, x minus x cube by factor of 3. So, here we have this limit. So, in the denominator we have x as well as x cube. This x cube is equal to 3 zeros. So, the coefficient of x should be 0 in the denominator. And the coefficient of x is alpha minus 1. To get it 0, alpha should be equal to 1. So, here we get 6 beta x cube upon x cube and the limit is equal to 1. So, the value of beta is equal to 1 by 6. So, the value of 6 alpha plus beta is equal to 7. Now, what next? Now, let's go for the Bandimal theorem problem. And the problem was 1 plus x whole square plus 1 plus x whole cube up to 1 plus x whole 49 plus 1 plus mx whole 50. We need to find n so that coefficient of x square is equal to 3n plus 1, 51 c3 for the smallest value of m as an integer. Now, it looks like it has many calculations. But what is the best part of it? We have 9 minutes for this question and there is no negative marking and it can be simplified by using GP formula. Great! Take a deep breath and get fully prepared to do it with full confidence. So we can see that the first 48 terms form a GP with the first term 1 plus x whole square and the common ratio is 1 plus x and we apply the formula of GP. So we get 1 plus x whole square into 1 minus common ratio to power 48 upon 1 minus common ratio. And we need to find out the coefficient of x square in the first 48 terms and the last 1 plus mx to power 50. So when we evaluate, we get this. So in fact, we are actually looking for coefficient of x cube in the first term and coefficient of x square in the last term. Now we can see here that the 1 plus x whole square, this has no x cube term. So we need coefficient of x cube in 1 plus x to power 50 and coefficient of x square in 1 plus mx to power 50, which is equal to 50c3 plus 50c2 m square, which is equal to 3n plus 151c3. And if we solve it, we get m square is equal to 51n plus 1. And by trial and error, for the least integer m is equal to 16, we get value of n is equal to 5. What next? Let's go for complex number problem. The problem says that z is equal to minus 1 by 2 plus iota root 3 by 2. And a matrix is given 2 by 2 matrix, where r is belongs to integers 1, 2, and 3. And we need to find out the number of order pairs r s so that t square is equal to minus of i. i is the identity matrix. This could be a good scoring problem because we see here that z is equal to omega, a complex cube root of unity. So we can apply the properties of omega like omega cube is equal to 1, omega to the power 4 is equal to omega, omega to the power 5 is omega square, omega to the power 6 is equal to 1, and so on. And also there is a small 2 by 2 matrix. Confidently and calmly do all the calculations so that you don't do any mistakes and get the answer without having required to repeat the calculations. We evaluate p square by multiplying the two matrices. Now, if p square is equal to minus i, then this value should be equal to minus 1 and this value should be equal to 0. Now, let's see when this is equal to 0, then what should be the value of r and s? Here we can very easily see that r should be odd so that we get 0. So, r should be 1 or 3. We have omega to the power 2r plus omega to the power 4s is equal to minus 1. And we see that omega to the power 4 is equal to omega. So, we get omega to the power 2r plus omega to the power s is equal to minus 1. And for r is equal to 1 and s is equal to 1, we get omega square plus omega square minus 1, which is true. 
and R cannot be 3 because omega to power 6 is equal to 1. S cannot be 2 because omega square plus omega square is not equal to minus 1. And S cannot be 3 because omega to power cube is omega to power 3 is equal to 1. So R is equal to 1 and S is equal to 1 is the only solution. So we are halfway and we have got 9 marks. Now let's move to the determinant problem. Here is the determinant and we need to find out the distinct values, values of x so that the determinant is equal to 10. And the easy way to solve is get two zeros in any column. Here we get zeros in the second column and we, when we evaluate, we get this expression and we can simplify by putting x cube is equal to t and we get a quadratic equation. When we, when we solve the quadratic equation, we get x cube is equal to minus 1 and 10 by 12. So we are getting two distinct values of x. Now let's try the last integer type question. It says that we need to find x in the interval 0 to 1 for which this function is equal to 2x minus 1. So in fact, it is a problem of the point of intersection of two curves. The first curve is say function of x and the second curve is g of x. Now let's check the slope of the function f dash x. We differentiate and we get x square upon 1 plus x to the power 4 using Leibniz theorem. And we find that f dash x is positive. It means the function is increasing function. Instead of finding the actual function, let's find out the minimum and maximum value of the function since the function is increasing. So we see that the value of f of 0 when x is 0 is 0. And we see that the expression e square upon 1 plus t to the power 4 is greater than 0 and it is less than t square when t is a fraction. So we see that the maximum value is 1. So when we integrate this function, we see that the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value, we find that it is 1. So we see here that we have three possibilities. This is the first possibility where the function f of x starts from 0 and ends up a value which is less than 1 and since it is increasing, continues increasing in this domain and g of x is a straight line starting from minus 1 to plus 1. In the first possibility, we can see that fx can cut g of x at three points. In the second possibility, we see that function f of x is still increasing and it cuts the function only at one point because there is no point of inflection. Again, in the third possibility, we see that the function cuts at only one point. Now we will see which of the three possibilities is our case. This can be done by checking f double dash x but double differentiate the function. When we double differentiate the function, we get this expression and we see that this function is always positive for x in the interval 0 to 1. So the second possibility is the correct. Here we see that this function f of x curves the g of x at only one point. We finished integer type section and we have secured 15 marks. Let's now look for a suitable question in single correct section. The quadratic question with trigonometric roots appear to be a highly scoring question. This is a question of two quadratic equations. This is the first equation with the roots alpha 1 and beta 1 and it is given that alpha 1 is greater than beta 1. And this is the second equation with roots alpha 2, beta 2 and it is given that alpha 2 is greater than beta 2. Now we'll see the first equation we evaluate the equation and we get the roots is sec theta plus minus 10 theta. And we want to find out alpha 1, which is the big. We see that in the interval minus 5 by 6 to minus 5 by 12, sec theta is greater than 10 theta. And 10 theta is negative. So sec theta minus 10 theta is greater than sec theta plus 10 theta. So alpha 1 is sec theta minus 10 theta. Now similarly, we solve the second quadratic equation and we find the roots as minus 10 theta plus minus sec theta. Similarly, we can see that alpha 2 is greater than beta 2. So beta 2 should be equal to minus 10 theta minus sec theta. So as required by the question, alpha, alpha 1 plus beta 2 is equal to minus 2 tan theta. Congrats, we have already got 18 marks now. Now let's attempt the probability Bayes theorem problem. The problem says that there is a computer factory that has two plants, T1 and T2. T1 produces 20% computers, 
Q2 produces 80% computers and the factory produces 7% defective computers. And it is given that the probability that T1 produces defective computers is 10 times the probability that T2 produces defective computers. Now, a computer is randomly selected and it was found that it was not defective. And we need to find out the probability that it was produced by T2. Now, using the given conditions, we find the probability that the computer is defective using this formula. And on solving, we find that the probability that a T2 produces defective computer is 1 by 14. Now, the probability that T2 has produced the computer given that it was not defective is given by the base formula and we put the values of the given the required probabilities and we find out that the probability is 78 by 93. So with proper strategic planning, when you had the potential for 30% marks, you got it.